welcome back to another episode in the Walking Jazz Standard series. In this episode, we'll be looking at the famous jazz tune, Lady Bird. On the surface, the changes seem relatively simple, but they are trickier than they first appear. I like to teach this tune to my students, because the changes don't follow predictable patterns. For example, there are many 2-5 progressions that don't resolve to the one chord. This makes Lady Bird a great learning tool, as it helps to break conventional walking methods and to encourage further development. Let's take a look at the form. Lady Bird is a 16 bar up tempo swing tune. We start off in the key center of C major with a C major 7 chord in the first two bars. In bars 3 to 4, we see a 2 5 progression in E flat major, F minor 7, and B flat 7. Normally, this would resolve to an E flat major 7 chord. Instead, it resolves back to the home key with C major 7 in bar 5. Of course, this resolution type is less common than the more standard resolution to the one chord, but it is used from time to time in jazz music. A dominant seventh chord can resolve in more than one way in jazz music. There's the classical resolution, chord 5 to chord 1, seen in 2-5-1 progressions. Next, the descending semitone resolution from a semitone above the target chord. And finally, the ascending tone resolution from one tone below the target chord. The latter is the example seen in bars 4 to 5 of Ladybird. Going back to the form, the relative 2 chord of B-flat 7, which is F-7, precedes the B-flat 7 chord to create a 2-5 progression, F-7 and B-flat 7 resolving up a tone to C major 7. Back in the home key, we see another 2-5 progression, B-flat-7 and E-flat 7 leading to the expected one chord, A flat major 7. In bars 11 to 12, we see a 2-5 progression in G major. This time, the 2-5 doesn't resolve at all. Instead, a new 2-5 comes in, D minor 7 to G7. This is another unconventional example, which is used surprisingly often Bars 15 to 16 feature the so-called ladybird changes. C major 7, E flat major 7, A flat major 7, and D flat 7. The D flat 7 chord creates a descending semitone resolution to the C major 7 chord at the top of the form. Probably the best way to outline the chord changes of a tune is with arpeggios. In this first exercise, a number of different arpeggios are used, but mostly chord tone arpeggios like C, E, G and B on a C major 7 chord, the root, major 3rd, perfect 5th and major 7th. But there are also extended arpeggios which incorporate the tensions of the chord, and some altered arpeggios on the dominant 7th chords, such as flat 9 and sharp 5. This exercise jumps all over the place, so it's worth taking your time with this one and practicing it slowly at first. Thank you. 
arpeggios are of course an important tool for solid walking bass lines. But these tools must be assimilated into your playing in order to create melodies and not just exercises. The next exercise utilizes arpeggios, scales and chromatics to create melodic ideas. Last exercise is entitled The Changes Are Your Roadmap. I hype on all the time about playing chord tones on beats 1 and 3 and playing passing tones on the upbeats, beats 2 and 4. However, there are no hard and fast rules in jazz music, just guidelines. If your melodic line doesn't theoretically match up with the chord changes, it doesn't matter. If it sounds good, it is good. That's all we have time for in this lesson. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, as always, please feel free to leave me a comment. Thanks very much and until the next lesson, take care.